so hello everyone. Um, the, the word I am proposing for this glossary is alternating. And I begin with something quite commonplace, that the institution is foiled if it is negated and reconstructed in an idealized alternative, which is conceived as something diametrically different from, what, from that which activates the negation. It is this alternative that refuses the norm and tends to harden in the course of its career as the seemingly preordained opposite of the institutional. What if instead of alternative, the term alternating is contemplated? I am interested in a term that changes institutionality like a current, that changes direction and distribution from time to time, every now and then, and is not constant and direct. I'm trying to inscribe otherness or alterity in the institutional to harness its transmission more broadly and by extension, maybe more democratically, as electrical engineering would tell us. Let me discuss the alternating across different scales. First is the scale of political economy. The term alternating is seen in relation to the context of the developmental. The developmental references the potential of transformation in which a world, quote, suddenly turns visible in the words of the artist, curator, poet, designer, and thinker, Raimundo Albano. He regarded contemporary art and his curatorial work in the 70s at the uh, Cultural Center of the Philippines, which stands on ground reclaimed from the sea. And you see Mrs. Marcos there. As akin to the way the government of Ferdinand and Imelda Marcos was priming the Philippines to become an industrial nation by way of development. The developmental agenda largely meant, according to Albano, the building of roads, population control, the establishment of security units. Developmental art in his mind was very similarly made from the same facture and affect. Sand, junk, iron, non-art materials, such as raw lumber, rocks, and people were shocked scared, delighted, pleased, and satisfied when confronted with this method of making art. Alternating here comes in two forms, the alignment of contemporary art with the economic policy of a third world Southeast Asian developing nation state that had undergone three successive colonialisms from the late 19th century to the middle of the 20th on the one hand, and the insertion of experiments into the official program of a cultural center which postured to be simultaneously civilizational and international on the other. Albano demonstrated what, quote, embodied bureaucracy might be able to insinuate in the conduct of cultural work that is not entirely estranged from development work fostered by the state. The artist curator like Albano, a position that in itself had been an alternating one, would vacillate between calibrated assimilation and nimble intermediation at a time when a world was sensed as suddenly turning visible, a prospect that puts its faith in the turning and is thrilled by the suddenness. It is the visible, however, that may be more complicated alternating between what Mark Curry dramatizes as anticipation and the unexpected, flickering across a spectrum of uncertainties from the calculatedly speculative to the totally unforeseeable. The alternating therefore always proceeds with suspense and partly because a person like the artist curator Albano was part of institution building himself. It is not as if there were formal institutions in place when he came into the scene. The artist, in, artist curator in Southeast Asia in the 70s took part in putting up institutions from art history to exhibition making to discursive production, as well as in preparing the ground for their critique. For their critique. Just some of the uh, activities at the cultural uh, center of the Philippines where Albano was the curator from 1972 to 1985. 
The second aspect of the alternating is the aesthetic underlying its logic of practice. Albano, in an effort to posit a post-colonial critique of Western modernism, wrote in an essay that installation, sorry, that installation is first as innate as childhood urges, and second, indigenous to the Philippines as opposed to painting that he deems Western. Here, he alternates between a desire for authenticity, even originality on the one hand, and a desire to belong to the currency of international contemporary art by contracting the language of installation on the other to nominate something native. The third register in the alternating is the disposition of the agent who alternates. The Philippine lexicon yields the fascinating word discarte, which is basically a kind of metis, a sense of cunning that is able to refunction the dominant structures or adverse circumstances through a series of turns in form. In other words, through a multiplicity of tropes. The alternating, a the alternating polytropic agent is able to ultimately transcend the binary of mastery and hybridity by entitling himself or herself to both. In going through the tricky processes of imitation and intimacy so that the foreign and the native would no longer be feared or reified, they would neither be heroically resisted nor hopelessly orientalized. Finally, the alternating implicates a possible theory of the interval. In the atmosphere of the alternating, the interval is key in resisting reconciliation and in pursuing risk through sorry. Pursuing risk through I'm alternating. So, uh, ah. Embro sorry. Pursuing risk through embodied bureaucracy and everyday improvisation of an embedded and emergent interlocutor. In a climate of ubiquitous tropical decay and political corruption, natural calamity, and endemic exploitation of power, the alternating ingrains in the agent exceptional practical intelligence so that the institutional can be lived out and outlived. Alternating creates a space for the interval, the lag between recurring shifts or currents within both acceleration and persistence. The concept can appropriate the resources of the Philippine word for interval, which is antala, derived from Sanskrit that means delay. It is moreover the root of samantala, which is simultaneously meanwhile, and the productive use of an opportunity, as well as the abuse of a vulnerability. It is at this point that David Medalia's stitch in time initiation may be, may be relevant. Here, the artist invites strangers to stitch sundry materials into a suspended fabric in a performative and collective moment that fills the gap of alienation with the time of others in the act of both labor and leisure, work and play, free time and reciprocal obligation, absorption and distraction. This acts likewise in here, in the curatorial and the contemporary, and inflect the other institutionality. It is the Philippine artist Jose Tense Ruiz who suggests the term alternating in his analysis of the viability of so-called alternative spaces and the fatigue that inevitably sets in and wears down alternative enthusiasm. Instead of alternative, he advances the term alternating, a conversion of energy in the form of a current. It is the current that keeps the expressive practice going in the face of both constraints and options. The main logic of practice, therefore, is, not, is therefore not a duality between institution and its negation, but rather in the adjustment of strategies and tactics that create productive situations or situations of productivity. In assessing these constraints and options, it might be important to review the portrayal of the Philippine state as weak, captured by a predatory and patrimonial oligarchy. 
scholars describe the Philippine state as in fact anti-developmentalist. Its economy, its autonomy weakened as public resources are privatized to strengthen a few families. In light of this description, the alternating mediator may well be served by the instincts of flexible citizenship, which may be seen as a cognate of other institutionality. The alternating, however, because of its vigorous oscillations, may at a certain point be exhausted and be inevitably overcome by intense complicity with discrepant interests and expectations. It may also tax the quick change talent and virtuosity of the alternating agent who has to constantly translate, rescale, and perform temporary conditions of possibility though cannot prefigure lasting results or regulate sustainable infrastructure because of fluctuating sources of capital and patronage. That being said, the alternating is, I think, generative and hospitable indeed in a way more political than the radical schemes of the, of the seizure of the dominant apparatus or abandoning it for extremely opposite structures. It is not so much anti-institutional as it is proto or para-institutional, always incipient and tangential relative to that which is aspired to and infringed. The temptations of seizure are surely irresistible, but they tend to be committed to the ideological, the dialectic, and the autonomous, while the alternating dwells in that delicate tension between everyday and emergency, the timely and the untimely. Raimundo Albano spoke of metaphysical unrest and the time to unlearn in the same breath amid the designs of the state to speed up development and stage its spectacles, like converting water to a cultural complex of brutalist architecture. The alternating response to what Bennett Anderson calls everyday emergencies, the precariousness of the everyday, the critical condition that demands urgent action and persistent attentiveness. It is drawn to the modality of the series or the cycle to incremental engagements that may not necessarily cohere into a center like what Imelda Marcos had imagined as the classical Parthenon or the first world Lincoln Center in Manila. She, she actually really thought of that. Intimating the nature of this country, oh sorry, intimating the nature of the country with its intermittent monsoon and exceptional humidity the alternating in the Philippines may be reckoned as archipelagic, at once aesthetic and natural history, like islands surrounded by water, which continually channels and mutates. Perhaps as a conclusion, it might be useful to turn to the ethnomusicologist and composer Jose Maceda, exponent of music concrete in the Philippines and Asia, and take up his conceptualization of the fifth interval in music as a device of bipolarity and also of order. In the music of Europe since the medieval period, Maceda contends, the fifth interval was a language of unity through the artifice of harmony and polyphony. Elsewhere, as in the Javanese gamelan, it was a language of diverse oppositions that gave rise to instead of precision, hierarchy, and isolation, a lush atmosphere of color, of non-ideas of resignation, renunciation, and abandon. A performative or even a trickster institutionality enacts this alternating dynamic, successive but not necessarily progressive, reversive but not immediately subversive a relay of intervals that anticipates, instilling not only polytropic agency in the boundary crosser of folkloristics or the shape shifter of speculative fiction, but also the inspired patience of the stitcher in time. Thank you. <laughs>